Welcome everyone to the Rotary E Club of Silicon Valley, where we share stories about education, innovation, and entrepreneurship. I am Andrew Top, president of this E Club. This week we have Jonathan Guy, founder of Pacific Bridge Club, and two of his students were Fino and Jimmy. We have a technical uh, glitch, so every once in a while you might hear uh, the audio cut in and out, but we will try our best to minimize that. We're doing something a little different this week. Instead of the presentation of the following uh, Q&A session we typically have, we'll be structuring this program more like an interview in order to better tell the story about Pacific Bridge Club. Uh, Jonathan, my first couple questions are for you. So tell us about the Pacific Bridge Club and uh, what it does and how it began. <laughs> So Pacific Bridge Club is a club that um, I started out of Castlemont High School. Um, its focus is to really help young men of East Oakland. Um, we, we are very proud of where we come from, but we love and we want to get out and see the world. So our focus is to really get out there and, and show these young men what the world has to offer. Uh, the club started because uh, people believed in us. People believed in me. Uh, years ago, I left uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I came out here to California. And I had tough times in my life, but there were people out here who supported me. And eventually, I would begin to travel. I lived in China, um, uh, Japan, and traveled the world. And it had tremendous effects on me. And one of the things that I told myself um, when I was in China was, you know, this would be amazing if somehow I could take this back and share these experiences with young men who come from uh, difficult situations like myself. And that's when it really started. Um, when I got back to America, um, I completed graduate school and I started teaching. And when the principal hired me at Castlemont High School, one of his questions was, what do you want to do uh, when you come to uh, the school? And I told him my vision um, from years ago, and, and that's to, to help young, young men uh, from difficult situations uh, to, to be able to, um, you know, to travel. So why the focus on young men? Focus on young men because, uh, for one, I, I am, I was a young man, um, and I remember joining um, uh, clubs, you know, when I was younger uh, that were similar to PBC, where there were groups of teachers, groups of mentors who came together to, to help us um, uh, when there was no one in my home. Um, another reason for young men is because we see here in East Oakland that uh, young men are not in the homes. Um, you know, it's, it's tough on everyone, but I notice in my classrooms, I notice uh, with a lot of students that there are not um, enough male role models um, in our homes and in our community. So I think by getting out, seeing the world, getting a different perspective, uh, men can grow and we can come back and help our communities. Well, on uh, behalf of all of our club, I can affirm that you are still a young man. <laughs> um, so how did you find uh, partnerships and funding for, for this kind of program? I mean, this, this, is, this must cost quite a bit of money. It, it does cost, but you, you know, you'd be surprised when you start cutting out a lot of fees um, and, and you do things yourself. Um, you know, when you do the budgeting and, and you do all the things and uh, using the skills that you've gained uh, through years of school and also through mentorships and seeing this same kind of, not same program, but similar kind of program happen in other places. So one of the things we've done is we've cut a lot of costs um, and, and uh, you know, going to China was, was a bonus because I spoke Mandarin. So I speak Mandarin. So I was able to do a lot of the, the translating and everything on that trip. But, you know, I, we go places where I have been and 
where I'm really familiar. So I can, I can cut costs a lot. Uh, the other thing is reaching out to businesses in our own community. Um, we have uh, companies, you know, and foundations like um, the Kazan Foundation, uh, who really wanted to reach out and help us. There's um, the uh, Oakland 100 Black Men's um, Club that, that really wanted to be a part of this. There's Oakland Natives, and, and not to mention other businesses like uh, Mako and Walmart, and a lot of the other sponsors do are really trying to make this happen. I mean, we all benefit if we're all world citizens, right? Um, so where, where did you, you mentioned that you, you mainly went to places that you've been before. So where did you go on this last trip? Yeah, so on this last trip, um, we, you know, I used to live in Anhui, China. And one of the things was uh, I used to travel to the north I knew it like how I knew Pittsburgh or how I knew the Bay Area. Um, so I, I told the kids last year, I said, um, you know, I think the, the, the average trips that folks go on when they go to northern China is uh, obviously Shanghai, Beijing. And if you can, Xi'an's a little bit out of the way. But, you know, that was, that was the place I wanted them to go. That is also culturally rich in so many different ways. But those were the three cities we we uh, we went to, and throughout the the um, the three cities, we used we used probably about twelve different means of transportation. Um, so you know the kids really got to explore, and they got to see each city um, for for what it is. Um, and you know I'm sure they're going to be telling us about it, but you know those were the three cities that we went to. Actually, that, that segues really well into the next question. So, um, Jimmy, Rufino, what, what did you enjoy most about, about your travels? Uh, just, oh, my bad. You can go, Rufino. Uh, well, what I enjoyed the most about our travels is how we got, we were able to bond with, like, our classmates more out there, like, in the, like, you know, get to live with them and experience, like, just the new, the new, like, world out there. And, yeah. Uh, what, you want me to do that? Yeah. Um, to, to me, the best part was actually going there because uh, uh, I did something that that before. Well, besides the people I went with, uh, with besides PVC, I didn't know anyone who went out of the states besides Mexico. Like, because you know, Mexico is uh, under us, and you know, it's not that far away, but it's like. It's like it's like when you're doing something for a for, for the first time, it's special because you know nothing's guaranteed, and you're doing it. And to me, I thought it, it was just an amazing feeling of putting all that hard work, uh, of music on the weekends and stuff like that, and then making it there and enjoying it over there because you know it was beautiful over there. We got to we got to see a lot of beautiful things. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, uh, kind of related to that, what differences did you observe about the, the culture out there? Uh, what, uh, the, what we observed about the culture out there was different. They, it was like uh, totally different than what like Americans say the Chinese culture is. It's like way more like beautiful and beautiful. And they also like, they have a lot of things that are like that go way back in time. Unlike over here, over here is probably like back to the 1960s, 70s. Over there, they go back to BC and all that. And it's just, it was just amazing going out there and seeing how some things were built by men. And that's like, that might have taken hundreds of years. Yeah, totally. Jimmy? I agree with you. Know, there was a lot of beautiful things over there. Uh, you see a lot of things that that are over there that are from the past and that and that have been preserved for 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 people to still see now. So I thought it was pretty amazing to see these landscapes. What did you find most difficult or or 
challenging about traveling to Asia? The most difficult thing was the translation, because like none of us really, you know, no Mandarin, only Mr. Guy. So it was really hard trying to like communicate with the people and like getting around and, and like just knowing where to go, like times and stuff like that. That was probably one of the hardest things, the communication with the people. But they were really nice, so it was, it was like kind of helpful for them. For them. Yeah. Uh, I agree with Rufino, but to me, like, the hardest part was that flight. That was pretty long, like, uh, was it 13 hours? Or how long? Yeah, it's like 12, 13 hours. Well, it wasn't too long for me, but like it was, you know, it was for a while, and then it, it 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 made it made landing kind of even more special because you like finally I got here. <laughs> Survived the trip. <laughs> so was was that um, the first time both of you flew? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? Okay. It was, yeah, it was the first time I actually got like on the plane. And then it was a very long ride <laughs> for yeah, my first a, time. That's a tough experience for your first time on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. So uh, as far as like language barriers, um, did, did you get to interact uh, very much with, yeah. with anybody and any of the natives or anything? Yeah, we were able to inter interact with a lot of the vendors out in the street. We were able to like try to like, we were able to like negotiate with them and just talk and try to buy stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a really fun experience talking to them. Some of them kind of knew English, probably because all the foreigners that come there, and that was but it was really fun interacting with them. Well, the, the thing is, the, the U.S. is not a haggling country. Yeah, uh, what is it like? having having that experience and with the vendors and and that haggling was a part of the business transaction it was it was a really uh, what's it called strange but like fun experience because like they were like approach you and like try to sell you things like even though when you didn't want it and they, they like lower the price and lower it and lower it and, and then if you want something you just gotta keep going with them you know try just try to go with their flow and just try to you know yeah, get them to give you a good price. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Jimmy? Did you have to haggle at all? Uh, yeah, you know, I got some stuff, some stuff over there. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys get any good deals? Uh, yeah, oh. I got pretty good deals. <laughs> I was able to buy like, bought, like a couple of watches and uh, glasses for like probably like two U.S. dollars or something, like two three U.S. dollars. Uh, there was this guy who was trying to sell me this. Um, it's like a house decoration for uh, one thousand three hundred Romanby, and I got him to go uh, to one hundred twenty Romanby. To me, I, I thought that was pretty fun. <laughs> well, this this is definitely a good business skill that you guys practiced. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something I've never been good at. <laughs> um, so Jonathan, this, this next one's actually for you. Uh, what is your vision for the next few years for the Pacific Bridge Club? Um, well, you know, over the next few years, uh, one of the things we want to do is expand. Um, we are really proud of what we're doing at Castlemont. Um, we would have liked to eventually get into LPS um, and get into more schools in Oakland um, so that, you know, more folks can have this opportunity. Uh, the other thing we'd like to do is to also travel more. Um, this year, uh, we're working to go on a trip for the 2018-2019 school year to Vietnam, Cambodia, and also China, this time southern China. Um, so, you know, our goal is still to see the world, but uh, while we're seeing it, we want to expand and give more young men um, uh, this opportunity. 
uh, long-term goal and hopefully the next four or five years would be able to, um, to, to Uh, the audio is cut out for you. Yeah. Oh, you are back. Can you hear us? Uh, we can't hear you. Yeah, so that, that again, is uh, one of the goals is, is to be able to get out there um, and with, uh, you know, I say in it's four or five years, uh, make it to where uh, alumni can come back and also begin uh, the travels with us. But also, you know, big thing, just expand so that more schools and more young people can have a chance to do this. So it's, it's a pretty typical trope for teachers in the U.S. to be under-resourced, um, and it's always easy to identify needs, but you were proactive about identifying a need and trying to, to solve it. Um, do you have any recommendations for other teachers who, who see these gaps, uh, but the, the solution to finding those resources isn't as obvious? Oh, uh, Jonathan, we can't hear you. Sorry about that. Yeah, you know, one of the things that they can do is, um, for one, network. Um, there's there's a uh, old saying that you should never have uh, lunch by yourself or, or eat by yourself. And that's one of the things that I like to think about, um, you know, getting out there, networking. I, I try to always... Um, you know, meet with people so that that way we can, we can uh, exchange ideas and expand. Uh, the other thing is, uh, is I think you have to find what's true to you. Uh, for me, you know, helping uh, young men is something that I've always wanted to do. Um, it, it, you know, I, I teach everyone at high school, but something that I wanted to do on, on the side because I see the need for uh, men of color, especially in East Oakland, I just wanted to get out and show them what I had a chance to see, but I want them to have a better opportunity. You know, I want them to see more. Um, and I tell Jimmy and Rafino this all the time. You know, I'm, I'm so proud of who they are and what they're doing. And I just, I want them to, to be, I want them to do way more than me in my lifetime. And I think that's what, you know, I would say, not just for them, but, you know, for, for other teachers is we want to we want folks to grow um, and you know I always say traveling is its own education in itself because in traveling you you find so much out not just about where you're going but who you are yeah, that's definitely true. Um, what are the different ways that people can support Pacific Bridge Club I can't hear you. Sorry about that. There, there's quite a bit. We have uh, the PacificBridgeClub.org. Again, that's PacificBridgeClub.org. Uh, we have a Donors Choose, where you can log on to Donors Choose, and you can type in uh, um, East Oakland uh, Pacific Bridge Club to, um, you could say, Vietnam or Cambodia, and, and the whole uh, you know, story will pop up and you can donate through there. Uh, you could also send, um, or I'm sorry, you could also contact us uh, through the website or at Castlemont High School. Uh, um, we have a Facebook, we have Twitter. And if you type in Pacific Bridge Club, um, it should pop up and, and you'll have access uh, to us, whether it be through uh, messaging us or just through direct email. Um, so you can use social media um, or there's just a traditional phone call uh, phone numbers on the website. So definitely a lot of ways to, to reach out to us, not to mention on weekends, 
um, we normally have fundraisers uh, for our youth so that um, you know we can prepare for our trip. Uh, at our fundraisers, we, we not only raise awareness about what we're trying to do, but we, we also connect it to a theme for that month. So every month, uh, we pick a, 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 an illness or something, some kind of social problem that we would like to contribute to. And we, uh, we accept donations for, for that, but we also take some donations and apply it to the illness um, or the, the, uh, the cause that we're raising awareness for. Excellent. Great. Um, so this last one is for Jimmy and Rafino. If every student in Oakland had the opportunity to do the same thing you did, uh, how do you think your community would be different? Well, me personally, I feel like everybody will look at like the U.S. different because like a lot of people take a lot of things for granted in the U.S. They like like the for food example, like some people think like you know they sometimes they they're picky about it. They're really picky and they they don't want like to eat certain foods. But like in certain countries, they're like it's like a problem. Like it, they'll be gladly take anything to eat as long as they get filled up. So I feel like a lot of people will like change their ways of like looking at the world and how just how they interact with people. Uh, I, I agree with the video. You know, uh, the trap, it will be, uh, PDC giving me this chance uh, made me a bit more social because before this, I was more closed in, like, uh, how do you say? I was more antisocial. And then, uh, Mr. Guy gave me a chance to be like more social and, and to travel to a new, uh, a new country was pretty amazing for me. And I feel like if every student had a chance, it, it, it would change their life. It, it would make them, it would make them think, think more deeper into things. Perfect. Thank you guys for, for taking the time to, uh, to talk to our club about your experiences. Um, thank you everyone for attending this meeting. Members, please remember to sign in and leave a comment or question in the discus below. Guests, please feel free to do the same and let us know what you think of our meeting. Jonathan, any last words you'd like to send us off with? Yeah, I just wanna say, uh, for one, I'd like to thank you uh, for allowing PPC and Jonathan, it looks like you've uh, cut off again. Are you there? Yeah. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I, I really think that, you know, this is something uh, special. This is um, it, it's, it's signature to Oakland, signature to Castleman uh, High School at the, at the time, for the time being. Um, but it, it's signature to uh, young men who want uh, to explore and see something that they've never seen before. So just, you know, if you do uh, want to help us make change, um, one of the things you can do is, is donate to us. And I just want you to know that 100% of everything that is given goes to our cause, uh, which is to raise awareness for different social issues and illnesses, but also um, to, to help our young folks uh, get out and see the world. So you can make change um, by giving us, um, uh, giving to our cause. Thank you. All right, everyone, have a good week.